Chris, you're making your Weber Cup debut here, and so far it's been a pretty good experience all around for you, right? Yeah, so far it's been great. I mean, you know, the the fans have been fans have been awesome. A little bit of a bigger turnout tonight, so uh, it's good to see. I mean, it's exciting. It's you know, it's team bowling. So anytime team bowling's around, you know, I I, I enjoy it. So I'm excited to be here. Seems like he's got a pep in the step. Anthony Simons, last year he was brilliant in singles, winning four out of five. This really is his environment. I really feel you're right, Phil, on that. Anthony's in a part of the lane he feels very comfortable. It looks like he's doing all the things that when he's competing on the national tour in America, he tends to score quite high. kind of our game plan going in, you know, once we look at the matchups, um, you know, we know Simo's very good when he has to get to the left, kind of go around the lane a little bit more, so that obviously plays into the strategy when we're trying to pick match matchups here, so uh, hopefully we can we can take advantage of Stu contemplating, I think he's still trying to figure out how he's going to get that ball to face up a little better into the 1-3 yeah. pocket. Currently, no doubt in this young man's eyes. Yeah, that ball is looking really good. It's actually not the original ball that he had planned to use, uh, but we made a little surface change to it earlier during the practice session, and it's looked much, much better. So, um, as you see, it's doing all the thing, all the right things right now. So, you know, see if he can make some good shots down the stretch here. Something distracting Stu off to his right. It is close quarters here at the Weber Cup. Ball reaction doesn't look quite as good as Simonson's. Um, you know, but it is a one-game match, so you know if you can get those off hits to keep happening, um, you know it's it's going to be a tight match down the stretch. Yeah, Stu looking to keep the ball a little closer to the pocket, play a little more oil, help that ball have a little more pop when it gets to the one-three pocket, and it certainly did slapping the ten out. Yeah, with his lower river, it allows him to to kind of float the ball through the front part of the lane a little bit easier. So not having to be as far left as Simon is here. Come on, give this a run, let's go. Well, you see Anthony's ball drifting high. It looks like he got it right into the dry a little early, which caused the ball to over, overhook. And unfortunately, leaving the four, seven, and nine. Unbelievably bad break. Actually making contact with the nine pin, but it's not falling over. Watch Sorry. the replay again. This happened yesterday. The four slid in front of the nine again. Yeah, and even this one actually even made contact with the nine and still didn't knock it over. So it's obviously a very bad break there. And uh, see what Stu can do with that little opening. Well, Simonson just cursed, and that could be so important in the final analysis. Still wanting that one desperately to get out to a sizable quick lead here against Anthony Simonson in the third frame. But once again, Chris, we talked about Stu's reaction just not as good as Anthony's, I feel. That ball just a little lazy down the lane. 
Yeah, it just doesn't want to drive through the pins quite as well. Um, what I've seen so far in these you know, first few events or first few matches is the off hits seem to be actually a bit better than you know, kind of those light pocket, uh, you know, not quite flush, but not quite uh, that light hit. They just seem to get the corners. As you see, Stu kind of talking about trying to get the ball to continue through a little bit. Um, yeah, he's just going to have to see if he can get the ball to store some energy a bit more to, to help it continue down lane. But I did the last Chris one, is a two-hander based off Anthony's last shot. Does he make a move or just try to throw a good shot? He seemed a bit distracted Come on. by the cameraman on the last one, so he probably didn't throw it his best. Um, but it, the ball is definitely seeing, you know, the, that middle part of the lane, and um, you know, obviously with that one being pretty good, he definitely needs to make a move. I mean, there's not much volume of oil on this pattern, um, so it's going to be changing pretty rapidly. It's, it's pretty similar to actually what we saw last night, uh, just a couple of feet longer, but with just very, you know, very little extra oil, it's it's almost the same. to help his ball shape around a bit. Still a little dicey, but like I said, those off hits are, seem to actually be carrying much better, so he may even be playing for that. Anthony with the ball switch here, Chris. Looks like he's going to a hybrid. Park Pearl. Solid. And that one is solid. Yes, that's actually a, uh, that is a pearl, um, but that's kind of the ball we originally thought he was going to be throwing. Um, it just, you know, like you said, when the lanes get a little choppy, it's a little warm in here, they're breaking down pretty quick. Uh, sometimes those pearl balls really want to, you know, jump off the friction, so try to control it with a little stronger ball. Um, wasn't seem to be, didn't seem to be working, so that's a good ball change there, and I think he's going to be good for the rest of the match, hopefully. the ball to strike a bit when you feel like you have to get a ball to a certain spot um, and then you know the one that gets all the way through it doesn't you know that ball's never going to make it to the corner so um, interesting to see what he does you know after this spare attempt and you know, we've seen some pins flying around so this is definitely uh, definitely makeable Chris in this world scoring system with counts so important if you're in Stu's position, do you just take the count here, or you try to go for it? Well, you get two here. That's it, so you get one. I mean, so right there, if you get two, you know, you're down in count. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's hard to try to go for three, obviously, in, in that one. But, um, you know, you get the two, you're still down the pen. Uh, but it could, I mean, it could come into play a little bit later to where, you know, if Simo gets you know, a nine spare or maybe he gets an eight spare and Simo or and Stu gets nine, then you kind of draw back to even. So now with the two point uh, gap here, it could, could help Simo in the long run, but, you know, time will tell. Anthony inheriting a two pin lead sitting on the bench up in the sixth frame. Yeah, that's a great shot there. Really, really big strike, not just for the 30 pins, but you're really capitalizing on Stu's mistake. And now Stu stepping up, seeing Simo's ball change, great reaction. Uh, and, you know, not fully confident in what he needs to do. You know, he's, he's going to be a little uncertain, so he needs to, you know, really focus, make a good one here, and see what happens. Yeah, so that was 
a much better shot. Uh, just the just that ball is just not doing the right thing. It's just so lazy down lane. Um, it could be, you know, from Kyle throwing the urethane ball a little bit earlier. Um, just a little snug down lane where Simonson's Reverie is helping that ball continue down the lane a bit more. And Stu's lower is you know, kind of struggling. Uh, we've seen a couple shifts strike. of the lead in the match. Stu taking the initial lead through three. Now Anthony taking it back for the Americans. A 13-pin advantage as we enter the seventh frame. And really, Anthony with a chance to put a big nail in the coffin of the Europeans here with an, another strike in the seventh. Just apologize for any salty language you might have heard there. Oh, oh the pin came across, but no contact. Nevertheless, could have been worse. Well, that's a pretty good shot. Anthony is so far left, so deep. This ball just getting behind the head and not able to kick the 10 out. Really good shot, though. Covers his player there. You know, so that's, that's key, obviously, uh, with his opponent still searching. You definitely don't want to you know, give away any pins. So trying to stay clean, but with this scoring system, it, uh, it can change very, very quickly. So definitely want to uh, put that frame behind him, settle down, and make another good one when he steps back up. So Chris Stu going from a, a Zen Master, a solid ball. He's going to the reality, which is stronger, but it has some polish on it. through the front part of the lane a little bit easier with that shine on it. Uh, it actually stored some energy and continued through the thing. So, I mean, that, that's a very good look. So, you know, now that he's lined up, you know, kind of the pressure goes back to Simo to, to make another good one here and continue to strike. This is tight. Consequently tense, just a couple of pins in it. And remember when they played in the third match last night, that was also close. 2-3-3 two, three, three to 2-5 two, two, in the end. Williams snatching the verdict. That one was probably his best of the match. I mean, you could just tell he didn't even need to watch the ball go down the lane just by his reaction and body language at the line. Absolutely posted it. He, he knew that one was going to strike as soon as it, it came off his hand. Absolutely, and the pure power of Anthony Simonson on display by that great camera angle from the back of the pit. All the pins just being wiped off the deck. He's putting the pressure right back on Stu. That can just kind of bow down to, you know, just pure red rate. I mean, where Stu's, you know, definitely on the, the lower side of the red rate in this particular match. And he's just having trouble getting his ball to continue down lane, you know, with these couple matches in front of him. So Simon's kind of taking advantage of, of that red rate that he has. Yeah, Stu quickly up to shoot that 10 pin. Just utter discontent for that wrapped in on such a good quality effort. Yeah, and you want, to be, you want to be careful with that because, you know, giving away those 10 pins, especially this late in this match, and with this scoring system, you can you can catch back up pretty quickly. So uh, you, you want to make sure that you, you get every pin you can. Not bad, or that was bad. 
but that wasn't his best effort off his hand. Well, that's what we call a leaner over in America. He just gets the six pin to lean on the 10 from the flat gutter, and it couldn't have come at a more opportune time for Team USA and Anthony Simonson. Unfortunate break there for Stu. Another really good shot. Tried to get the ball to continue a little bit after that wrap 10 and just continues a bit too much. Ball drifting ever so slightly high, leaving an eight pin, but two quality efforts for Stu, especially in that point of the match to make that ball change, commit to it, and make two really, really good shots there. Yeah, I mean, for his, for his ball reaction, I'm this is a very well bowled game. Um, I mean, just, you know, not seeing what you want to see, it's it's hard to make really good shots. And I, I feel like Stu, besides that one errant out to the right shot, has made, made a lot of quality shots this match. Yeah, the fifth frame undoubtedly proved expensive for Williams. Well, Anthony, a bit errant in that shot, getting five. Uh, this match not over. He needs to get two of these pins. Yeah, trying to keep it a bit interesting up here for us in the booth. Listen, <laughs> like you said earlier, pins flying around a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a little showing off there to, to finish that match, but he definitely was going to make sure that he got the three he needed. Um, and you know, a little extra bonus there. That was his pin number finishing in style. Well, either way, it's a point for the Americans. They close the gap to only one as they trail the Europeans five to six. Stu Williams falling to Anthony Simonson. Oh, very nice 242.